to begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning to you all. Good morning. And I welcome you with joy to this Mass. On this day, we are requested to pray for the Adams family. We continue to pray for our sick brothers and sisters. And the Lord in his mercy may touch them and bring them back to good health of mind and body. We also thank God for hearing our prayers for those he has healed, that he may take the glory that is his due through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we are sinners in need of God's grace. Let us therefore take a moment to recall the many times we have sinned against God and man, to be sorry for those times and humbly ask him for his pardon and peace. You reign today into life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and rests with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Proclamation from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself is Savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you should love his wife as himself, and the wife should respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem in all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Hallelujah. kingdom. 
experience. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to the Lord is in the Lord. Jesus said, What is the kingdom of God is like? To what can I compare? It is like a mustard seed that a man took and planted in the garden. When it was fully grown, it became a large bush, and the birds of the sky dwelt in its branches. Again he said, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like a yeast that a woman took, mixed in with three measures of wheat flour, until the whole batch of dough was leavened. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning to you all. Good morning, Father. You know, I just said to myself, if St. Paul wrote this first reading, it's in our own dispensation, or it's living up to now. I don't think you would have written this gospel, the first reading. Am I right? right? I don't think you would. Especially when he said, for no one hates his own body. There are some who hate their bodies. And let me tell you this, you know, uh, you can Google it and read, read it up and see. Uh, and then that's been 2015, when I left East Africa and came back to Nigeria on my way this way. A small girl who should be about seven, eighth grade killed herself because she hated her body in Kenya. Yes, John, yes. And what was the problem? Something insignificant. She was beautiful. But she said, that she has tiny breasts, that her age meant and those in their classes have big bumps, and she wanted something like that. I'm not telling you stories. When you go, go, when you go Google it. And the mother brought it on air. She was on the radio for a long time. And she said she wanted an implant. And the mother said, no. It's again our Catholic Christian religion. We will not do it. And she went and committed suicide. So when St. Paul is talking about those who hate, who hate that, that are, how about this point, about hating the body, for no one hates his own body, there are people who do that. Even here in the US, it's, it's still, Google it up, or look, 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 look up for it on, uh, on YouTube. The young girl, a black young girl, who says she's not black, that she's white. And she's like me. And she's saying she's like she's, <laughs> she's like loose, black. <laughs> that she, but I'm, I'm, I'm fairer than she is because she can stay you're white. But she's claiming that no, no, no. I am, I'm a white girl in a black body. I thought I'm not, I'm not black. I'm white. What about the man? The man of about fifty or sixty something years said. He's not, not a man, he's a baby. He's looking for a nanny. <laughs> you know, strange things happening in our world of today. And then the question we ask ourselves is, where are we heading to? The basic Christian lovely things we should be doing, we ignore them. It's, it is all about how I feel. It doesn't concern anybody. It's about me, it's my life. Well, let us face it, my brothers and sisters. Our life is not our own. It's a gift from God. And it transcends what we think and who we are. And as such, God has created us that we may enjoy this life. That was exactly what St. Paul was trying to say. Respect one another. Husband, respect your wife. Wife, respect your husband. But you have to understand something. St. Paul broke history. The, 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 the community he was talking to, the dispensation he was talking to, is not our own dispensation. St. Paul was talking to the dispensation that regarded women as properties. Do you understand? You can buy them and dispose them. So in order to stop that, when you go through the, the book of Ephesians, you will understand the particular community St. Paul was talking to, and that will help you understand what was happening. So St. Paul broke history. He's telling them, no, women are not properties. You can't just dispose them at will. You have to love them. But then to get their, their attention, 
he began with the women. Women, be submissive to your husband. Women, love your husband. Submit to whatever they tell you. And the men were so happy. You know, this is part of the readings we take during, <laughs> during wedding ceremonies. And the men will always be happy. <laughs> until, until you come to the second part. <laughs> you know, the Paul told them, women, be submissive to your husbands. Do whatever they tell you. And the men were so happy. Then he went down. Indirectly, men, love your wife. Love them, love them as Christ loved his church, which is greater. But the men didn't understand what, what was being said to them. Because Christ sacrificed himself for his church. That means, as a man, you must stand ready to sacrifice yourself for your wife. You take the bullet while she lives, and she can take it to the hospital. If you survive, fine. If you don't, well, good way. But that is what it means. But Christ today in the gospel tells us, some, tells us something greater than that. How do we manifest that love? We become like the mustard seed. That when you, when you see it, it is the smallest of all the seeds. But when you plant it, it grows. Grows into a gigantic tree. The birds of the earth go on it to rest and make their nests and have their food. Not just to make their home, they have their food and the fruit of the mustard seed. Then the mustard seed grows fruit for us, human persons. That means, in diverse ways, everyone benefits. So, also, each and every one of us called Christians, that through our lives, through our good works, through our charity. Look at Christ. While Christ was on earth, many people followed him wherever he went to. Not just because he was a miracle worker, no, but because he was compassionate and loving. He demonstrated what he wants us to put into practice. And people flocked to him wherever he went. He was always happy. And he received all. And when the wrong thing was done, he never made the mistake of chastising them. He turned his God into a whip and flushed those selling pigeons, exchanging money, out from the temple. And when the lawyers felt, look, don't, don't be saying that. You do not know what the law is. You are insulting us. He said to them, alas, I word to you. The master seed is in each and every one of us. The works of love, the works of charity, the works that inspire others. To do what to come to God and to do what is right. That is the mustard seed. Is it growing in you? Is it bringing people to you, or is it dispersing people away from you? It does. It does not matter how much you put in. Relax. Just put it in. It is God's work to, to do what to bring the output. Let me tell you this and tell you. There was this lady. Who goes to work each day and after some time she noticed there was a concentration of homeless people some were begging and have no food so each time she gets up to go to work she prepares her lunch and breakfast so she, pre she prepares two two parts one lunch one breakfast one lunch one breakfast on her way she will stop up there give somebody one part of breakfast and go to work. When she eats her own breakfast, during lunch time, she first of all drives out, goes back to the same place, gives another person a lunch pack, and then goes back to work because the proximity was there. And then she would eat her own lunch. After some time, she wrote letters to her neighbors around. If you have things to dispose, probably good clothes and things like that, if you pack them and drop them by your mailbox, I will pick them up. There are people who need them. You know, some responded. Each morning she goes to work, she picks. She will stop, give to those who need. One of those days, a rich man who was just by making phone call, look, looked at her, looked at her. He couldn't understand. And she gave out the, the, the breakfast and gave out some food. And whatever was in the content of the box she got that morning, the man walked up to her straight and said, what are you doing? Do you know the number of homeless people in the world? What difference do you think what you are doing will make? Stop waste. It was just like saying, stop wasting your time. He couldn't finish. Stop waste. One of the homeless came to, came to their midst, interrupted, held the lady by the hand, and said, thank you. 
Thank you very much. Without you, I would have, I don't know what would have happened to me today. I pray to the Lord for breakfast. And here, I have seen the face of God in you. Thank you very much. Thank you, God. And she said, I'm not Lord. She said, for now you are. Because I prayed when I woke up, Lord, give me something to eat. In three days, I have not had any meal. And she broke down. And he said, can I kiss your hand? And she said, no. Rather, can I hug you? Can I hug you? The, man, the, the homeless man said, yes. And they hugged. Tears fell from their eyes. And the rich man who was there trying to discourage the woman broke down. It is not the quantity of love we share. It is the determination to go on. It is not how much we are frustrated or pushed down. But it is how much we stand up, picking up our courage, and continuing to do the good things we do. God perfects it. We may not know the impression it is having on people, but it is positive. We do not know those who are trying to imitate us by looking at our good works. We are becoming mustard seeds. We are growing in love and charity. You may not grow in size. You may not grow in height. But you have grown in words, in good works. Reaching out to others. Instructing, teaching, and doing work and encouraging. In the name of the God, we are listening to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rise and bring our knees joyfully with hope to our loving God that He may come to our aid. That through the actions of the Holy Spirit, God will bless us with concrete signs of growth and Christian unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God's grace open our minds and hearts to embrace our sisters and brothers in Christ. Throughout the world, and foster the unity which the Holy Spirit brings to us, and we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That in the third millennium of our redemption, God will prepare our hearts and churches to be transformed by the Holy Spirit. For the sake of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will open our hearts and minds to the presence and activity of the Holy Spirit among all people. For an increase in understanding among all the people and an end of conflict, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God welcomes all who have died into the joys of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your own personal intentions. We continue to pray for God's consolation to the families that have lost their loved ones at the shooting in Pittsburgh. We pray that God may touch the hearts of all. That we may love one another and put it into practice. That we may rise above hate and speak of God's peace and love. For those who have died, that they may rest in peace. We continue to remember our brothers and sisters who are sick. We continue to commend, to commend them into the healing hands of our Father, that he may heal them and grant them joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, in your mercy, come to our aid. Hear our prayers, O Lord, and dispose us to do your good will, to challenge others and become the lamps that will light, light in the light the lives of others through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have peace, bread to comfort. Which earth has given our human hands of made, may become for us our bread of life. Yes, we are. Creation, through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands may become for us our spiritual bread. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with a humble and a contrite heart. May the Lord wash away my iniquities and bless me from all my sins. Pray 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your name. Amen. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Yes. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions are done, and powers tremble before you, heaven and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a new form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Daniel our Archbishop, Chelsea's Auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy. On us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles and saints, St. Paul, St. Patrick, St. Francis, St. Ignatius, St. Anthony, St. Timothy, St. Lawrence, St. Elizabeth, St. Veronica, St. Cecilia, St. Andy Boca, St. Joseph Akiva, St. Patricia, St. Monica, St. Martha, St. Agnes, St. Lucy, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we bear merit to be co heirs to eternal life. And may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, we form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the joy and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And now let us share a sign of peace with each other. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and grant us peace. Brothers and sisters, behold, Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He is the Lamb of God. He takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those of us called to this supper of the Lamb. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to eternal life. Amen.
we will break out our joy as you have simply come and exalt in the name of our God. Let us pray. <coughs> May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do have a beautiful day. Thank you. Longing for peace.